Okay, I thought it was way too uh, short in the, the, the title, but it will be next time. Yes. <laughs> okay. okay, so first of all, a, a word of caution. This is a talk about a, a research in its very early stages, so there will be mainly questions, not, not answers. So uh, let me uh, state the problem first. So let G be a, a final group. Final group, and uh, sigma is a subset of G which is symmetric. Um, by which I mean that if uh, an element belongs to sigma, then its inverse also belongs to sigma. And the KD graph of G with respect to sigma is a, this is the, gra the graph. So that the vertices are just the elements of G. And the edges uh, show the, what happens to every element if you multiply from the right by an element of sigma. So the edges connect G to G sigma for every G in G and sigma in sigma, and um, okay, and let's say that we look at the uh, A is the adjacency matrix of the Kelly graph, and so now the spectrum of age, just the set of eigenvalues. Uh, the a the graph has uh, uh, the number of vertices is like the number is like the size of G, and all the eigenvalues are real, so we can order them um, up to lambda of the size of G, and the largest eigenvalue is always trivial. It 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 is the same. It equals the size of sigma, the same the size of the set of uh, generators. And this one is at most minus sigma. And, <coughs> and we generally ask, um, so many people ask, when is this Kelly graph a good expander? OK, and, and uh, this Kelly graph is a good expander, is a, a good expander. Um, in many ways, if and only if, the second eigenvalue, lambda 2, is much smaller than lambda 1, or is bounded away from lambda 1. If, if we have a series of Kelly graphs where lambda 2 is bounded away from lambda 1, we say it's a, an expander. Um, OK. And um, so now I want to change. I want to, this is the, A is usually given in the regular uh, basis, and where the basis are just the group elements. OK, so we have uh, the group elements by the group elements. But now I want to change basis. OK, so a new basis for A. OK, so first we should notice that um, A, as given here, is just uh, the image of the, of the regular representation of G. OK, it's the, sorry, it's the image of the set of generators, sigma, uh, via the regular representation. Of G, um, <coughs> yes. I mean, uh, yeah. But sigma is also the, the, the notation for sum, so <laughs> I don't know how to write it. But it should be something like that: Sig sigma over sigma in sigma of sigma. <laughs> yeah. So and, and now, so I'm going to use the fact that the regular representation of G is a sum with multiplicity of all the uh, irreducible representations. So this means that um, I can, in other words, it means that I can take this adjacency matrix and change the basis such that the, the matrix, matrix become a block matrix. OK, so for example, okay, let's just write this is a, a sum of all irreducible uh, representations of G. 
So A becomes a block matrix. So for example, for if G is the symmetric group on three elements, and so it's a six by six, there are six elements, it's a six by six matrix, but with this uh, new basis, it becomes, it has four blocks, one of size one, sorry, two of size one, which I'll draw here, and then two more of size two. And this would be, everything else is zero. This is a trivial representation, so um, this is the sign representation. And here we have two copies. So these are two copies of the, of the standard representation or the two-dimensional representation of, S, of uh, this group. Okay, and now and wh what we should note, and, and, it's a, and it's easy to see that the spectrum of A is simply the union of the spectra of the union of spectra of the um, of the blocks. So now the, the the general question I want to ask is which block wh where does uh, which block is I would call it uh, spectrally dominant, that is, uh, where does, uh, from which, um, in other words, where does lambda 2, the, the highest non-trivial eigenvalue, come from? Okay, and, uh, and uh, I should, I didn't say, but the trivial representation in every group, the trivial representation will always be, the, the image of sigma will always be the size of sigma, so the trivial, represent, the trivial eigenvalue lambda 1 always comes from the trivial representation. And um, so this is a general question one can ask for any group, but now I will focus on the symmetric group, okay, so from now on, from now on I will focus G is the symmetric group, so I will denote it by Sn. So now I have, I have more concrete things to say about the symmetric group. Um, so there is this very, um, I would say very, or perhaps even uh, very optimistic guess, optimistic guess, perhaps even too optimistic, um, is that the following happens, that there is a, always a, so every, I mean, every symmetric group has only finitely many ir irreducible representations, but if I look at all of them as the, the series, uh, it's possible that there is only a finite number of series of, of representations that, that such that one of them is always dominant, okay? So I, I would say that uh, there is a finite set of uh, irreducible representations such that uh, one of them is dominant. For yes, for every sigma. I mean, for every sigma, one of them is dominant. Of course, but you said it's too optimistic. Sorry, what? You probably don't expect it to be independent of the set of guesses. In the more o most optimistic uh, okay. guess, yes. No, no, I'm talking about S n right. symmetric group. I mean, uh, okay, so I give you now, so I'll try to, to convince you it's true. No, no, I don't assume anything. Right, and then it's true. So I will show you now. Okay, l let me. Sorry? No. Right. No, actually, in this case, I will, this will be one of my uh, evidence to court that. Well, if disconnected, then may be many experiments. So, right, okay. Okay. Right. Okay. So I, I, I should be uh, more precise. I mean that if there are more than one 
if there is, if there is uh, equality in the, there's more, more than one dominant, so at least one of them will be one of the dominants. Okay, this is what I mean. Okay, so here is some, some evidence. So first of all, <coughs> and this is how I started to think about it. Um, so there is a result by um, Caputo, Liget, or Liget, and Richthammer. from 09, and they proved what, what was known to be, to be Aldous spectral gulp conjecture. And, and they showed that when uh, this conjecture sta said that if sigma is a set of uh, transpositions, so these are permutations that only uh, exchange two, per two elements and leave the rest unchanged. Un uh, then uh, the standard, there's only one representation which is always dominant. Okay, so standard, um, the standard representation, uh, which is, uh, okay, if for those of you who know the, how to read representations from uh, Young diagrams, this is this representation, okay, with only two rows and one block in the second row, is always dominant. Yes. If not, yeah, it, it's of dimension n minus one. Yeah, and uh, so this is the first piece of evidence. This is a very strong evidence, in my opinion, but. Okay, and the second one is actually, uh, this is what, what you ask, what happens? Um, so what happens if the graph is, is disconnected? So Cayley, the Cayley graph um, is disconnected. So this means spectrally that the, se the second eigenvalue is the same as the first one. And if this happens if and only if, uh, Sigma does not generate the, the whole group, but by the classification, by classification of uh, by, the, by the classification of transitive groups of uh, multiply transitive groups, k transitive groups, uh, we know that. Um, Except for finite, finite many, finitely many cases, there are the Matthew groups. If you take a four transitive group, it will always be the whole of A n or S n. Okay, the only four transitive groups, except for the Matthew groups, are either A n or S n. And this means that in this situation, you can always capture lambda two, the, uh, yeah, the second eigenvalue, with um, all the so lambda two can be captured. Uh, Captured by the 11, some 11, uh, un 11 irreducible representations that are dominated by this one. With so we have the four squares and n minus four in the first line. This this is the the, the reducible representation that corresponds to this one. Is just the action of of the group on four tuples. So if the group is transitive, this graph alone should be uh, if. If it's not transit for transitive, this graph, graph alone should be non-disconnected. So you, will s you would see it in one of the irreducible representations that is dominated by this one. And there are only 11 such. Uh, sorry? Okay, right. Um, so let's assume, okay, you're right. So let's assume uh, sigma does not, for now, is not co contained in AN. So if it's uh, for transitive, you get entire all of SN. But you can also fix it for AN. And, uh, okay, and, and the third, I'll write it here. So the third uh, evidence is what happens when, when sigma is a full, a full conjugacy class. So I wouldn't say that uh, we don't know this yet. I don't think it's known for this case, 
but there is a there are strong results that go to this direction. So there are some easy observations that show that uh, if you have uh, enough fixed points in your conjugacy class, then the standard, the standard representation is always dominant. And there, is a, there are results by Larsen and Shalev that give you something of this spirit, that there is only finitely many irreducible, uh, finitely many dominant representations in this case. Uh, and there's also, I, I ran some uh, experiments with Ori Pozanchevsky just the last few weeks. And we saw that it seems that uh, there are only actually four, in this case, there are only four, uh, you, you need only four representations to dominate. Um, so this is the evidence for this conjecture, for this very strong guess. But now I should just say, I, I don't have much time left, so I will say that there is some counter evidence so we also ran experiment, uh, some simulations. Uh, so in small n's, small values of n up to size nine, uh, you, there is very, there is very l small uh, evidence to this strong guess. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I I, I believed it. I I was a, a bigger uh, believer uh, two weeks ago. <laughs> But uh, anyway, so e even, if, even if this strong guess is not correct, it is still very interesting to understand where that is, where, what is the limit of this uh, phenomenon. So there is clearly some strong phenomenon. So I mean, I'm, I'm, pretty it's, I'm pretty sure that this is not where it stops. It doesn't stop at transpo transposition. So at least the least you can do is to uh, generalize this to perhaps um, uh, uh, generate, um, generating sets with uh, small permutations or stuff like that. And uh, the last remark I want to say is that if this is true, this should lead to uh, a proof that random Cayley graphs of SN are expanders. Because uh, if you just look at the spectrum of uh, specific um, irreducible representations of, of, this, of this kind, um, you can show that they are good expanders. Right. So, I'll end this here.